Oh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. Well, for uh, nine years now, um, I've been doing my blog and my main motivation is to make people very aware of some of the things that are coming uh, our way very, very quickly. And that's mostly been abrupt climate change, the sixth mass extinction economic collapse. Um, but now I'm, I, I want to make a new warning. Um, there are things that I just couldn't foresee. I could have foreseen the, uh, the fires in Australia. I couldn't have seen how uh, serious they were. Um, I was taken by surprise by the pandemic and then, um, and then what the reality is behind all of that and the, uh, you know, the, the agendas that have been brought in uh, so quickly. And now we have this present uh, insanity. And it just seems literally that there's yet another divide. Um, so I just want to make this as a, as a kind of warning to people. Um, so I do have a little bit of background. I'm 64 years of age. I used to, uh, when I was younger, be in, involved in kind of leftist uh, sort of movements, sort of on the on the edge of them anyway. So I'm very, very um, aware of not only that, but of, of, of my history. I've, I've studied history quite extensively. So I reckon um, I know what I'm talking about, whereas people who are younger, who haven't had that background in liberal arts and history, um, and um, haven't, have basically been uh, dumbed down over the years, just have absolutely no idea. And so I think that they need to be uh, made aware. So I'm just going to share this today. Okay, so this is something I've just finished. An offensive against the whites to break their resistance, eliminate them as a class and replace their, replace their livelihoods with the livelihoods, uh, with the livelihoods of people of colour and LBGTQ. So I've said as someone who's been very sensitive to social injustices and someone who's learned a thing or two in their 64 years, studied history and understands the language behind the rhetoric, I wish to comment on this. I've never been, never will be part of the right and a lot of the language and assumptions still leave me uh, cold. However, when I saw the tweet below from an academic at Cambridge University, I could see as clearly as night and day that there is a very dangerous movement uh, to attack religious people and people who are conservative minded and white, and eventually just people who are white and, uh, and are just quite conventional people. Anyway, this is the tweet. This is from Priyamvada Gopal. Uh, now we have the opportunity to carry out a resolute offensive against the whites, break their resistance, eliminate them as a class, and replace their livelihoods with the livelihoods of people of colour and LGBTQ. So, who is this woman? Well, the first thing I discovered that has uh, uh, there's been a lot of controversy around her in Britain, and her Twitter account has been made secret. And the more I learnt about her, the more I can understand why that might be the case. So this is what they say about her in Wikipedia. She's a professor in the Faculty of English at the University of Cambridge, where she's a fellow of Churchill College. The main teaching and research interests are in colonial and post-colonial literature and theory, gender and feminism, Marxism and critical race studies. And she's uh, contributed to a lot of newspapers, including The Guardian, The Hindu, The Independent, Medium, New Statesman, Open Democracy, etc., etc. 
Uh, and as we can see here, so taken, lifted this from an article, she seems to be doubling down on her obnoxious views. I say it again, white lives don't matter as white lives. So here goes an article that was written uh, about this, which I've uh, posted. Um, and, but this is so typical. Uh, instead of kind of uh, calling her to account, her university, Cambridge, are not only defending her, but promoting her. Cambridge University backs academic who treated white lives don't matter and promotes her to professor after she received a barrage of abuse and death threats. Well, I can understand why she might receive some abuse. So let's just talk about it, uh, the language of genocide. So because of earlier involvements in left-wing move, movements, I can understand the language and what it really means. The Jacobin Revolution of 1789 in France had its uh, reign of terror and Karl Marx in the 19th century was all in favor. And this is a quote from Marx. Um, there's only one way in which the murderous death agonies of the old society and the bloody birth throes of the new society can be shortened, simplified and concentration, concentrated. And that way is through revolutionary terrorism. And that's sort of what we're seeing. Um, in the first successful proletarian revolution that was actually a coup d'etat, Lenin eliminated the bourgeoisie as a class and that meant that they were shot or sent to a labor camp. Stalin followed by eliminating the kulaks as a class using even more extreme tactics. And this was followed by Mao, Pol Pot, and just about every communist movement ever since. So then I've just found a, another couple of quotes. This is from Lenin. Um, we would be deceiving both ourselves and the people if we concealed from the masses the necessity of a desperate bloody war of extermination as the immediate task of the coming revolutionary action. And that was back in um, 1906 uh, during the 1905 revolution and many years before the, the 1917 October revolution. And then Trotsky, uh, said, for us, we were never concerned with the Kantian, priestly, and vegetarian Quaker prattle about the sacredness of human life. Well, there you are. And, uh, and then this also needs to take, be taken into account. Uh, Lenin's term of useful idiot, it's a term for someone who allies with the cause and enables its propaganda without fully understanding the cause's goals. They're ruthlessly used by the cause's leaders and discarded when the goals are achieved. So that was the main point uh, that I wanted to put across. I've just uh, added uh, a couple of, um, uh, of, of videos. Um, oh, this one came out today. Um, so this is how they're teaching Antifa how to uh, better break the windscreens of cars and drag the occupants out. So very, very peaceful people. There's some videos online of some out of control cars driving into crowds and things like that. And let me tell you, this is about $10 online. It's an emergency window breaker. And it even has a keychain. So you put it on a keychain, put it on your bag, and you can um, you can rip it off in a state of kiss of an emergency. You push this onto their window, and it gives you access to the vehicle that may be about to hurt you and your friends. It also has a seatbelt cutter if you need to remove the person from the car. Okay, so I've seen some videos online of some Okay, so that's, that's that. And um, yeah, I won't play this. Uh, it's a little bit longer, uh, but you can read the article. And, but this ca also came out today. This is Democrat Representative Il Ilhan Omar and uh, see what she's calling for. So I would say she's a public representative. She's a uh, a Democrat representative, and presumably she took an oath to 
uh, defend the US Constitution. So uh, this could be easily construed as, um, as sedition in my mind. So let's just see, this is just very short. As long as our economy and political systems prioritize profit without considering who is profiting, who is being shut out, we will perpetuate this inequality. So we cannot stop at the criminal justice system. We must begin the work of dismantling the whole system of oppression wherever we find it. Okay, so that seems pretty much like a call for uh, for violent revolution and uh, radical change. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, that's enough for me. It's um, Seymour Rocks from Down Under. <laughs>